now that Save Atiwa Coalition, made of environmental NGOs, have presented a petition to Parliament in a bid to put pressure on government to rescind its decision to mine bauxite in the Atiwa forest. Convener of the group Daryl Bosu maintained government does not need to mine the bauxite in the Atiwa forest reserve to be able to carry out its responsibilities. Let's now cross over to Salom Amena, who has been monitoring the event in the House of Parliament. So while we're crossing over to Salom, the Save to our Coalition made of environmental NGOs have presented a petition to Parliament in a bid to put pressure on government to rescind its decision to mine bauxite in the Etiwa forest. Convener of the group, Daryl Bosu, maintained government does not need to mine the bauxite in the Etiwa forest reserve to be able to carry out its responsibilities. Salom is ready now to join us from Parliament. You heard the majority leader. Were you convinced? Clearly, he, he had the same posture that we should not forget that government needs uh, the money to do all this. Yes, I know government has been given that particular narrative that we need the money. But we all know Ghana should learn from our history. 100 years of mining in this country, where has it gotten us to? Of course, people will say we get a lot of money, we get a lot of revenue and all of that from these places, but where does it get us to? So we are saying that there are better uses for the forest. The forest is not just a source of bauxite, it's also a source of water for 5 million people. We want government to sit down critically, do the math, put it together. What does it take to actually provide water for 5 million people? One of the critical components of providing water services is watershed. At what forest is providing that particular service? There is no forest in Ghana as unique as that forest. And we are saying that you need to all bear in mind that all of us need to bear in mind that we are not against bauxite mining in this country. What we are saying is that the right things must be done. First of all, we need to identify which areas in this country we can mine, which areas we cannot mine. And when we even determine that, let's do a due diligence analysis. What will it take to ensure that we do not destroy? Let us bear also in mind that bauxite mining is one of the most destructive industries. Once you touch an area, that's it. They have been talking about sustainable mining and all of that. We know that is just a farce. And even the issue of jobs is also a mirage. It's not possible. There is no evidence to wait. So we are saying, let's look at the options which will bring more benefits, well-being to the, the masses. Instead of bauxite mining and all the mineral associated industry, which is associated with a few people benefiting, let's look at options that will secure our resilience to climate change, provide us with water, and also secure our forest, which is also we owe the future generation an opportunity to hand over to. Right, finally, be, be beyond this petition, what else are you going to do? It looks like the deal is done and they've really started assessment and all of that. There is no deal that is ever done. And that is why we are still here. We are still trying to get our voices heard. We are employing all Ghanaians to add their voices to it. We are saying that government can satisfy its obligation under the Sano Hydro deal without touching Atiwa. They are just not being transparent with the process, not being open. If they were, they realize that the, the evidence and a trade-off analysis that has been done shows that Atiwa need not be touched. So we are going to continue. We have several other options, and the law allows us to do that, appeal to the courts, appeal to parliament as you have done. We are also going to maybe get our, our case heard in the courts eventually. All right, thank you very much. So that was uh, Daryl Boso. He is the convener for the Save Atiwa Forest Coalition. So from the Parliament House here in Accra, I am Selom Amenya, TV3 News.